I want to continue my explanation of how to calculate the force on a surface in a flow from a velocity field. And we were doing the example of flow down an inclined plane. So just to review, to calculate the force on a surface, we want to calculate the stress on that surface, multiply by the area, and we get the force. When the stress varies with position on a surface, we need to calculate the stress in every little piece of the surface and add them up to get the total force. When we have our system written in interesting coordinate system, we can do an integration to do that summing. And so once again, it's the stress at the surface, and this may be a function of position, integrated over the entire surface area gives the total force. So for the flow down an inclined plane problem, this is the solution. We already have solved for the velocity field. And we have chosen as our coordinate system the xz coordinate system with y is the neutral direction. The z is the flow direction and x is the direction in which the flow changes. The surface is the surface of the plate and the surface of the plate has dimensions width in the y direction and L in the Z direction. So we are going to want to calculate our force with an integration across the surface dy dz. And we talked last time that the stress component we want to integrate is the tau xz stress component because we are interested in the stress on an x surface in the z direction. And that's exactly what this tau xz is. But as I pointed out last time, we actually are not interested in the stress on a ex surface, but rather on a surface whose, out or whose unit normal is minus ex. So we need to in fact include a negative sign here to make sure that we're correctly talking about the force on the minus ex surface. From here and with the solution for the velocity field, we can now calculate this force. So the force is the integral from zero to L, the integral from zero to W of minus tau xz evaluated at the surface dy dz. So evaluated at the surface means that we want the value at x equals h. x equals 0 is the top surface, x equal h is this bottom surface. So what we want is the integral from 0 to L, the integral from 0 to W of minus tau xz evaluated at x equals h dy dz. Tau xz comes from Newton's law of viscosity minus mu dvz dx. We have the solution for velocity. It's equal to vz is equal to rho g cos beta over 2 mu times h squared minus x squared. We can now take the derivative tvz dx and we get all the stuff in front times the derivative of this with respect to x. The h term gives us nothing. The x term gives us minus 2x. When we plug this in here, we get tau xz equals minus mu times minus rho g cos beta over mu times x. And we end up with tau xz is rho g cos beta x. Going back up to this equation for the force, the force is equal to the integral from 0 to L, the integral from 0 to W of minus tau xz evaluated at x equal h dy dz 
This quantity, tau xz, we just calculated was rho g cos beta x. This quantity evaluated at x equal h is rho g cos beta h, putting in an h for the x. And now I put this into my equation and I get force equals the integral from zero to L, the integral from zero to W of minus rho g cos beta h dy dz. Now rho g cos beta h, nothing in here is a variable, so they can all come right out the integral. And we have two simple integrals, rho g cos beta h, the integral from zero to L, the integral from zero to W of dy dz. This one gives me W, this one gives me L, and I get minus rho g cos beta h w L. Now, I have to point out that the force I've calculated using the formulas that I've calculated, starting way back here, because I used this particular version of Newton's law of viscosity, this is the version in which the stress is compressive stress. So I have calculated the compressive force. If we want the tension force, we need minus F, which is the usual convention in mechanical engineering. The compressive force is used very often in some chemical engineering textbooks.